ABBA's international breakthrough took off with their victory at the Eurovision Song Contest in 1974. Two things make it very special. First, the road ahead. They were determined to not be a one-hit wonder at the Eurovision Song Contest. They would become the most successful and groundbreaking artists coming out of Eurovision. That night changed their lives, music history, and Sweden's reputation in pop culture. It may have felt like it happened overnight, but nothing could be further from the truth. That's the second special thing about it, the road before. At that point, ABBA's victory really was the culmination of what they've been working towards to for more than one decade. They tried to get into Eurovision for many years as individual artists, and only one year before Waterloo, they found themselves together as a group trying to get into Eurovision with another song and failed. Today, we're celebrating 50 years of that evening, so let's take a look back at the road leading to it and how this failure was so important. Welcome, Benny Andersson, Anne Frid Lindstad, Jörnen Beers and Agneta Fetskog. Hey, hey, so very soon we're celebrating 50 years of ABBA's very first album. And we're kicking off today. When ABBA performed at Sweden's pre-selection for the Eurovision Song Contest in 1973, they were already singing, recording and performing together for three years. We talked about their very first concert from 1970, when they were on holiday in Cyprus, as well as their subsequent concert history as Festfolk from 1970 onwards and the studio recordings that brought them more and more together. Last year, around this time, we celebrated 50 years since ABBA's first single, People Need Love. In the following month of 1972, they recorded further songs together. One of them was their follow-up single, He Is Your Brother. A probably very crucial turning point came in November 1972, a recording of a song called Nina Pretty Ballerina. This was the first time that Agneta and Frida really got to sing together, full on, just the two of them, proving their energetic unison for the first time as combined and only lead singers on a song. And what a song it is. In the same month, they performed Santa Rosa, the b-side of their most recent single at the time, live at a music festival in Japan, and different to the studio recording, again giving more focus on Agneta and Frida as lead singers. In an early interview, they said that it's because of our ambition to make it abroad that we are singing together. So this unusual long-distance trip to the Far East is just another example of their ultimate goal, to have an international breakthrough. For years, that ambition has been leading them again and again to one of the most promising and prolific catalysts of international exposure, the Eurovision Song Contest. And for that, they first had to reach the pre-selection in Sweden and win that pre-selection. So let us first take a quick look back at the long road that it took until ABBA were together at Melodie Festivalen in 1973. The individual members have been writing and submitting songs for Melodie Festivalen frequently. Many times their songs were rejected in the first place, but occasionally they made it into the actual show. The first member to try it was Agneta in 1968. She just took off with her recording career and submitted one of her self-written songs a big favorite of mine. She hoped it would be performed by Swedish singer Gunnar Wiklund, who participated in Melody Festivalen four times. However, Agneta's song was rejected and she recorded it for her first album and as a single release. If you're a fan of horror, this song actually made it into a Swedish horror film in 2008, 40 years after Agneta tried to get it out to a wider audience. Please make sure to listen to this atmospheric and melancholic song. In 1969, Frida was the first member to actually participate in the contest. The song was her fifth single. For that show, Björn and Benny also submitted a song which was recorded by Brita Borja and became her final hit. It was also recorded by Agneta in 1980. For Melody Festivalen, this song was rejected. Instead, Benny made it into the show as co-writer of another song called Hey Clown. Benny's song became second, Frida became fourth. He was actually in the audience that night, which was probably the first time he must have laid eyes on Frida. A few weeks later, both Benny and Frida actually met for the first time in a Swedish restaurant. And so, three future members of ABBA had crossed paths and the foundation was laid. Only two months later, on the set of a television special, Agneta and Björn met for the first time. One year later, all four spent their first holiday together in Cyprus, when that important first concert happened. 
In 1971, Björn and Benny submitted two further songs for Melody Festivalen, but both were rejected again. One composition became Björn and Benny's third single and featured Agneta and Frida on backing vocals. The other song was recorded by Lil Babs with all four future members of ABBA on backing vocals. In 1972, Björn, Benny and Stig Andersson finally made it into Sweden's pre-selection for Eurovision. That song was performed and recorded by Lena Andersson, reached number one on the Swedish single charts, but ended up on the third place in the contest. And now we are back to November 72, when they just came back from that music festival in Japan and received word that Björn, Benny and Stig were chosen again to submit a song for Melody Festival in 1973. This time they decided to perform the song themselves together with Agneta and Frida. The deadline for submitting songs was the 15th of January 1973. Björn and Benny wrote the song only one week before. That song was Ring Ring. We will talk more about the writing, recording and history of this song next week when we celebrate 50 years of the single release of Ring Ring. Agneta was heavily pregnant during this time. That was a risky situation, making everyone nervous, and to make things worse, when the baby wasn't born yet, the birth was rescheduled to the 10th of February, the actual day of the contest. During this time, Agneta and Frida were very close to each other, and Frida, with her experience and insights, supported Agneta with advice and comfort. She soothed her friend's anxieties about everything from the delivery to the responsibility of taking care of a child. When rehearsals started for the show, Agneta was very relaxed, but everyone else around her was nervous, or in Agneta's words, more or less hysterical. She recalls the story that at one point, the head of the studio happened to hear a child shriek, came storming down the corridor and yelled, Oh my goodness, has it arrived? She thought I'd had my baby in the middle of the television studio. <coughs> the night of the contest, Agneta was nervous again, but Ring Ring was expected to be the winning song. How would the performance go? The show was taped and broadcast, but unfortunately no video footage survived. Apparently it was erased by Swedish television. It would be interesting to know when it was erased, because ABBA became world famous just one year later and it blows my mind that this entire show doesn't exist on video anymore, or that even snippets of it wouldn't be rebroadcast back then. There have been fans passionately going through the entire Swedish television archives and all Scandinavian TV companies watching every program from that day and nothing was found. It doesn't exist on Norwegian TV either, but maybe in the archives of Denmark and Finland. There is one very big hope. One month after the contest, in March 1973, a 50-minute program was broadcast on TV1 in Sweden. This program featured the three most popular songs in the selection finals in three of the Nordic countries, Finland, Norway and Sweden, and ABBA's performance of Ring Ring was included. Could this program still be in the SVT archives or possibly in Finland where similar programs might have been broadcast? All of these researches and information were collected by Sarah Russell on her terrific website abbaontv.com and she was the one who 15 years ago accomplished the inconceivable. She rediscovered and shared ABBA's performance of Ring Ring on Melody Festivalen as an audio source. So at least we can listen to this historic performance of that evening. According to Karl Magnus Palm, most people in the business regarded the song as the outstanding favorite among all entries. But it was down to a jury of 11 experts, which consisted of musicians, critics and people from the music business. For Ring Ring, only two members of the jury gave any points at all. Like Björn and Benny's submission the year before with Lena Andersson, Ring Ring only came third. ABBA's session guitarist Janne Schaffer played in the orchestra that night and he remembers how ABBA was sitting in their dressing room afterwards. I've never seen such depression. And this low point was extremely crucial. It would change the course of the competition, the general reputation of Ring Ring and ABBA's fate as a group and all to very bright lights of hope. Two weeks after the contest, Agneta's first child Linda was born. By then, Ring Ring was celebrated by the public. Major Swedish evening papers invited their readers to phone in and give their opinion if the right song won at the pre-selection, and 80% said that Ring Ring should have won. The song became ABBA's first number one on the Swedish charts. The English version was number two, and both would stay there for over two months. 
At one point, ABBA occupied the top three positions on Sweden's combined singles and albums chart with their debut album Ring Ring on number three. The song was also successful in many European countries, including Belgium, Norway, the Netherlands, Denmark, Finland, Austria, and impressively, even in South Africa and South America. One year later, it sold over 500,000 copies, a song that was disregarded by a Swedish jury of experts. The actual winning song of Melody Festivalen reached number 12 on the Swedish charts. It was this success, ABBA's appeal at an audience, especially in contrast to the unexpected jury voting, which made them realize that it was realistic and serious to pursue the idea of staying together as a group. And all of this would prepare them even more to try it one more time. In 1974, there was a new jury system consisting of more than 150 ordinary voters from Swedish population. This time, Björn and Benny also had the experience of taking their time with a song. Waterloo was written several weeks before the deadline, and they had written many more songs along the way. In fact, half of ABBA's next album, so they could choose the best one for the show. And even visually, instead of dressing like average Schlager stars, they chose sparkling outfits. And you all know what happened then. Next time we are exploring the making and recording of Ring Ring in more detail. And if you want to re-experience ABBA's Road to Melodie Festivalen, I created a playlist here with all the songs and compositions rejected or accepted that ABBA and their individual members submitted for Sweden's pre-selection of the Eurovision Song Contest over the years. You will also find full shows there and recreations of lost shows. Alright, until then, later!